All right, so I got a question. Is it weird to love this sound so much? This super crunchy 606 sound. All right, yes, this is an extreme example, but this is still in the ballpark of what I wanted to talk about today, which is just the exploratory nature of something as simple as a distortion pedal on something as simple as a drum machine, like a 606, a dumb drum machine that doesn't really change its sound that much, right? And how much distortion can actually emphasize and help a machine like this, and it doesn't have to be a 606. It could be a simple synthesizer, any other drum machine, even samples, but how something like distortion can really change the way it sounds, mold the sounds together, almost act like a compressor, and really just kind of bring out these new harmonies and tones that we probably weren't originally hearing, right? Because, for example, without the pedal, it sounds like this. Pretty cool. Right, of course, there's a lot of compressors and things going on on this end. We got some chorus, and then we got a little compressor slamming it, which, of course, we took that off. You see, like, this is what I'm talking about. We have to push machines, but not in a very strategic, specific way. Maybe you can get there eventually. I kind of have a strategy when it comes to this, but the exploring of sounds and tones. So today, we're gonna be pushing this, kind of getting back to where I just was, and exploring how far we can take things with distortion. And I'm curious to know, what's your breaking point when it comes to distortion? Because I love something as extreme as this. Listen to this. Here, everything just started blending, getting distorted and crazy. This might be too far for me, right? Try a different circuit, maybe the LA. And of course, we don't need to push things this far, right? We don't need to just swing the pendulum as hard as we can. We can live somewhere in the middle. And that's where I like to find my boundaries when it comes to exploring distortion. So with this setup here, without getting too far ahead of ourselves, I figured the 606 is mono. We're running this mono signal into this pack rat pedal by JHS. Shout out to one of my greatest friends for gifting me this pedal. It's been an absolute blast in this setup here. And then all of this is going into the Digitac where I got my samples for just chords and things like that. But all the drums are gonna be coming from the 606. So here, let's go back to this little chill example. Right, completely dry, pretty cool, whatever. Let's start compressing it a bit. That already changes the way the 606 sounds, right? And this isn't even distortion yet. Now, this is our input here for the 606. Distortion down, filter down. I really like this little radioactive symbol. I don't know what uh, that means. It's one of, basically the pack rat is like eight or nine, I can't count them right now, different rat distortion pedals from way back in the day, but it sounds sick on something like a 606. So we'll turn it on, radioactive symbol. Alrighty, right, it gets a little too high end, filter it down. And it doesn't need to be that hard. Look, it's right there, that's it, that's all we need. Without it, that's okay. Oh, fun fact, you hear the open hat? You can actually shorten your open hat using the tempo knob. We'll take these closed hats out. Listen to this, your open hat is super open, but your tempo knob controls your decay time on a 606. Why? I don't really know. My best guess is that when you're playing with the tempo slow, you want your open hat to be a little more open for longer. And then when you speed it up and you're making tracks really fast, you want your open hat to be a little more shorter Whatever Roland was thinking when they made this thing, I don't know. But if you have it synced externally, which I do here, it's coming from the Digitac, this now just doesn't change your tempo, but it does change the decay time on your open hat. Weird, weird fact. Okay, back to the distortion. Listen to that. Before and after. Go to this track here, lower this down.
even that tongue, bringing the symbol, it all plays off one another. Take the kick out. All right, a little more distortion. There's just these waves that come in and out, right? Oh. Now, let's take it even further. We'll go into our mixer page. Again, we're looking at the input here. Send us to the chorus. Give it a little reverb. Push the resonance. Again, I'm in the green. We're in the green. Oh. Okay, so I'm not talking about what I'm doing because it's kind of tricky. It's a weird way of doing things. I can go like this, watch. I'm gonna open up our pattern link. And close it off. So, for those of you who know, know, for those of you who don't, you're probably like, what the hell buttons is he pushing? I'm gonna turn down the 606 so we can hear what's happening with this uh, little sample here. So, I have the sample. It's chopped up in grid mode, but I'm only playing this first quarter of the sample. And you can see that only these two pages are playing of my 64 step pattern. That's because I have all my tracks set to per pattern length. So every track has its own pattern length. They're not just tied to one. This allows me to then choose a main reset for all the patterns of just two bars. So on these last two bars is actually where the other chops live. So if I just loop those last two bars, those are the two bars that has the other sample chop. And then the first two have this one. And the reason I'm not just letting it play all the way through is because I can then choose, right? So then I can choose when I want this to kind of come in. There it is. And then close it off again. And it's only gonna loop those first two bars. Right? And it's all because of this reset point. I'm only letting it play 32 steps and then reset, 32 steps and reset. But once in a while, I can open it up to 64 steps and then close it off again. Let's start bringing the stuff in. Now let's see if I can do this. We're gonna open it up, bring snare, take the things out. Then I got two bars to close it. Boom, back in action. Again, let's try some more distortions. This is too far for me, right? This YRB one's really interesting because the filter acts really strange. out. Now we'll go to our kick drum. There it is. Like, listen to this. Again, without it. It's fine if you like it, right? I like some heat. I like to put a lot of hot sauce on my tacos, right? To each his own. We're just exploring. We're just having a good time. I will say there is some weird trippy stuff happening with the pre-delay on my reverb. Do you hear that? A little too much. And we'll shave that off. Open this up.
that's fine. Go to our chorus. What about our delay? Let's see if we set our delay, oops, wrong one, that's not a delay, to really fast. And then we go to this 606. All right. All right, explore. Now, we're gonna bring our distortion down. Ah! Oh. There it is, my friends. Yo. Hopefully I didn't just go way too bonkers on this one, right? There's just something so magical about pushing the limits of compressors and distortion and chorus and reverb and just sonics and harmonies that it just sounds so sick. Right? Like, listen to this. Yes. Can I do this? Can I nail it? Let's see. Ah, I missed it, but it's all right. The show must go on, right? There it is. Yo. Bring it back. I appreciate you, my friend. More than you know. Oh, a little envelope. It's my new DJ name, a little envelope. I'm in the green, baby. Listen to that. Oh, hope to see you again next week. If you want to support the channel, I sell some synth merch here, synth hats, some sure, sample packs, some are free. Be sure to check it out, but you kicking it is more than enough. I appreciate you, my friend, like I said before, more than you know. I'm excited to see you again next week. And until then, you already know the drill. Share the love, share the knowledge. Knowledge is power.